Hey, everybody on Zoom and YouTube Live. We'll get started here in about 30 seconds. Uh, just want to welcome everybody, and uh, we'll get started here soon. Hey, P, thanks for joining us. Hope all is well up in the Atlantic District. Alex Polici, awesome you can make it. Brad Johnson, thanks for being here. Hope all is well in Michigan. Darren Campbell, thanks for making it all the way from Seattle. Coach Lasson, three weeks in a row, you're on fire, buddy. Thanks for being here. Eric Woodbeck, thanks for coming from North Dakota. Jason Power, thanks for joining us from St. Louis. Kenny Roush, thanks for supporting Goalie Nation this week. Appreciate it. Kevin McLaughlin, same to you. Always honorary members of Goalie Nation. Neil Conway, thanks for joining us from Cleveland, Ohio today. Stephanie Yates, thanks for being here from beautiful Southern California. Hope the weather's nice. Zach Cantrell in God's Country in Montana. Thanks for being here. So we'll have to see if any Alaskans join for you here. I know. Hopefully they hop on. I bet we got a bunch. Abby Steve, Lee, thanks for joining us. Steve, you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Just want to welcome everybody to the USA Hockey webinar series presented by Pure Hockey and BioSteel. Um, we got a, a great group of, of presenters here today. Steve Thompson, our ADM manager for goaltending is back on. So we're excited to have him back. And then, um, uh, the group for Jeremy Swayman, who won the Mike Richter Award. But Steve, this is all yours, and um, the show is yours, and have fun. Thanks, Dave. And uh, everybody, thanks for joining us today. we got a really cool talk. Um, as I'm sure everyone's aware through the different social media channels that we've been pushing this out, Jeremy Swayman was the recipient of the Mike Richter Award this season. And uh, we were really excited to get him on. And as we started talking with Jeremy more and more about his process and the success that he's had, we really felt it was important to bring on his whole development team. And what we want to highlight today is all the different parts that go into success in hockey and specifically with goaltending. One of the challenges we have is that very few play the position that we're in. And so we want to highlight today how a team was able to really work within the goaltending structure and everybody has a different role. And so everybody, thanks for joining us today. We have the staff from Maine which includes Red Gendron, the head coach, Alfie Michaud, the assistant coach, Matt Murray, the director of sports conditioning, which is the strength conditioning coach for the team, and then Jeremy Swayman, who was the, the starting goalie. And thanks, guys, for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. For having us. Nice to be here. What I want to start today is just um, we're really lucky in, in the richness of the hockey background, and we're going to jump into Jeremy's success and, and how everyone played a role within that. Uh, but I really wanted to start by just – the success that everybody's had through their time in hockey. And so Red specifically, you know, starting with you, you've been coaching for 23 years now and a mix between pro and college hockey. <laughs> Looks like news to you. And it's been a little longer than that, but yeah. longer for sure. And, um, it looks like a national championship in 1993 with a first national championship that Maine had, which must have been a pretty exciting time. And then um, a Stanley Cup championship in 1995 with the New Jersey Devils. So we'll, we'll definitely love to hit on some of those things today. Yeah, well, I, I've been fortunate, but I have been coaching a little longer than that. It's, uh, it's like 41 years complete and uh, been at just about every level. And, and uh, I have done a lot of work for USA Hockey uh, earlier in my career. I had, the, uh, had the honor to be an assistant coach on three different national junior teams and uh, was heavily involved in the coaching education program for many years. I Believe it or not, I was once a uh, uh, coaching education director in the, uh, in, the, in the New England district. So I've been doing this for a long time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great to be at Maine again, the second time. So I'm delighted to be here with all of you guys today and to talk about uh, Jeremy Swayman and, and all of the successes that he's had. Awesome, thank you. And uh, Alfie, you know, another main, main roots here, part of the national championship in 1999, which was the second national championship that Maine's had. 
And then from there, I went on to a 13 year pro career and uh, had the opportunity to play with the Vancouver Canucks as a, as a goaltender too. So pretty neat to have you on board. And I'm sure for you, similar, uh, pretty cool homecoming to come back and coach at your alma mater now. Sure. It's, uh, it's obviously an honor that, uh, you know, Red will say it too. It's a place that probably got us started and, uh, you know, uh, definitely owe a lot to me, you know, everything, uh, you know, my, my wife, my kids are Mainers, uh, you know, that, that propelled me to pro hockey, which was obviously, a, every kid's dream. Um, so yeah, I did some ecstatic to be back and be a part of the staff and, uh, you know, but, uh, thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. And then Matt, um, this is your sixth year now as a director of sports performance and, you know, when we originally were talking with Red and Alfie and Sway about putting this together, your name got brought up so many times about how just integral your role is on the team's success and the individual's athlete success. And so we kind of last second, we're like, no, we got to get Matt on here. I and mean, we can't talk about development without having him here with how big of a, you know, part of the puzzle you are. So thanks for being here. And I'm excited to share with the group what you do for the team. Yeah, of course. Looking forward to it. And then last but not least, why we all are here today is uh, Sway. Thanks for being here. Very successful junior season with Hobry Baker finalist, Hockey East Player of the Year, the Walter Brown recipient for the best American player in New England, and then the Mike Richter Award for the top goaltender in all of college hockey. So pretty, uh, pretty exciting season for you and appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. So one thing I wanted to Thanks, start Summer. with. Yeah, you bet. I don't know how the, uh, the quality is all the way up in Alaska. We were, we're pulling yeah, some miles here. A little glitchy. So um, I wanted to start today just by talking about the rich history of goaltending in Maine. And, and, you know, when you think of successful NHL goaltenders that played college hockey, there's just so many that played for Maine. Um, to name a few, you know, Ben Bishop, Scott Darling, Garth Snow, Mike Dunham, Alfie Misho, who we have on, uh, Jimmy Howard, Scott King, Matt DeJuice, and Mike Morrison. And I know that there's a handful more. Matt, Matt Del June is what the, <laughs> the juice, the juice is his nickname, you know, so yeah, you're right, but uh, there have been a, a lot of great goalies at Maine, and uh, probably the guy, uh, you know, besides the efforts of those athletes themselves, the guy who played uh, the most integral role, and he was Alfie's coach too, is, is the great Grant Stanbrook, who's or lives in in, uh, in Naples, Florida. Now he's retired. But when you when you think about the excellence of Maine hockey, uh, the excellence of, of the goaltenders that we've had here, uh, he's certainly a name that immediately comes to mind. He coached all of the all, most all of the goalies in the early era, and now we're pretty fortunate to have you know one one of his disciples in Alfie uh, to to continue. Uh, with the development of our goaltenders here at the University of Maine. Yeah, it's really cool that uh, this is kind of full circle. I know that my first year coaching, I was working under Matt Thomas at University of Alaska, and he's spent some time with Maine, and he just kept raving about Grant Stanbrook. You've got to meet this guy. And I had the opportunity my second year coaching to meet him in Naples, and it just blew my mind to hear the way that he viewed the position. And then even more important to me at the time was – he wasn't a goalie. I assumed that this goalie guru that I kept hearing about would have had this legendary goaltending career. And then as I'm speaking to him, he's like, oh, I was a forward at Duluth. And I was like, you're the goalie guru. Like, I, you're, you weren't a goalie. And, and so, Alfie, do you mind touching on just, you know, what Grant brought and, and still brings? Because it sounds like he's still very involved with reaching out and asking questions and following all of his main goalies. Yeah, there's no question. I got a text from him today because I I shot him the link. So he was wondering how, how it all works. So, uh, yeah, he's just, you know, what, what makes Grant really special is, uh, he's just such a great people person. You know, he makes you feel like you're the most special person out there. You know, we, we laugh about it us guys that have played for him. Um, you know, for me, I always felt like I was Grant's favorite, you know, but I'm sure Jimmy Montgomery thought he's his favorite and Paul Korea and, Steve Curry and all those guys. And that's, that's what he does really well is he connects with you on a personal level. And then he's a guy that just studied the position as a player. Um, you know, if he was going to do this, we just talked about it last week uh, when he was at Dartmouth, he said he, he felt like he failed his goalie and 
he didn't prepare him well enough. So Grant put on the equipment and start asking goalie questions and jumped in the net and try to figure out angles and really, really start learning the position. And he's, uh, he's been everywhere um, to, uh, you know, trying to learn the position. So he, he said he'd never, never let that happen again, where his goalie wasn't going to be prepared. And uh, he's done a lot of work and he's, he's obviously a great mentor to a lot of us that have come through this program. And uh, he's a guy I, I talk to weekly, you know, and we just, Last times it's just a talk, but it always goes back. We end up talking goaltending uh, on on any given night when hockey season is going on. At ten o'clock, I'm probably going to get a uh, a phone call because uh, Howie or, or Ben Bishop or somebody let in a goal that he, he didn't like, and he's going to want to want to talk about it and dissect it. And uh, that's where I got to look at my phone and decide whether I'm going to pick it up because if you're picking it up. Anybody that knows Grant, it's going to be probably an hour. So, uh, but he's just a wealth of knowledge. He's an unbelievable man, and uh, he's he's a big part of my life. There's no question. That's awesome. And so, Sway, as we talk about all these, you know, the history of Maine and the success that goaltenders have had, and what where were you on this path to choosing to to go to Maine when when you had these options to choose schools, and, and you're kind of back in three years ago now. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, that was a big factor for me. And I knew I wanted to go to a place where goaltending was a priority in the coach's eyes and, and the development of goalies and the success of goalies was, uh, you know, obviously relevant. So, you know, I looked in, uh, looked in the, looked in the history box and obviously there are some great names that are still playing. And, uh, after I had my first conversation with Alf, um, my visit, I knew that this was going to be a special place for me. And, I actually had the uh, great opportunity to meet Grant Sandbrook and also work with him as well. Uh, my freshman year, I remember we were skating in the summer and there was no coaches out there. And there was this old guy just sitting up in the stands watching. I was like, all right, he's just probably a loyal main fan. And he came down to the ice after and just started giving me all these tips. And I was like, all right, this is pretty cool. Like, and he didn't tell me his name either. And he was just like, just this random guy. And I just remember, I was like, taking all this stuff to heart. Cause I was like this eager freshman, like super excited to play. And I don't know, this guy knows hockey and just started talking to me. And next thing I know, I, I go up to uh, the office and Shannon who's working there. So front office lady, she goes, yeah, that was Grant Sandbrook. And I was like, Oh, who's that? And she just told me all the history. And, he, and she said, yeah, if he tells you something, you better listen, no matter what he says. And uh, right from then and there, that's when our relationship really started and took off. And, uh, I got to learn so much from him as as well as Alf. That's awesome. That's got to be pretty uh, pretty cool to be a part of that fraternity now with just the great goalie, you know, alums and then the coaches and that and that whole history just to to share that with right. that group. Pretty special. Absolutely. Red and Alfie, do you, do you mind walking Dak back to recruiting Jeremy and you know getting him on the team and what you saw on him and where you thought he could go? Yeah. Well, we. Uh... We got a tip about Jeremy. We were looking for a goalie, and we we got a tip uh, on on him. And uh, the first time uh, any of us went out to see him play, I mean, it was pretty clear that he had extraordinary athleticism. Um, you know, I'd had the, the good fortune to be at UMass working there with two Cahoon when uh, when we had John Quick, and. Uh, Immediately, I, I could see the lateral mobility and the puck tracking skills that uh, we would normally, you know, you, we, we've, uh, you know, become uh, accustomed to seeing from somebody like John Quick. So uh, that was pretty clear. And, and as, uh, as, soon as, as soon as we, uh, we met Jeremy, you know, it became very obvious that this guy wanted to be the best. And uh, when you... You know, in, in recruiting, if you can find athletes or players to recruit who love the game as much as you do as a coach or more, um, then you know they're going to do the work. And when it gets difficult, they're not going to run and hide from the work. Uh, they're not going to point fingers. They're going to dig in and get after it. So we knew he was athletic. Uh, and, and we also had a pretty good sense right away from talking to him. And of course, you know, we end up doing a whole bunch of homework beyond that 
as, as every college, uh, college staff does. But it was pretty clear early on that he was the kind of guy we'd want to bring into our program. Alfie, do you remember kind of from a goalie specific, being able to see him and some of his technical skills where you were at on Jeremy as he was showing up as a freshman for you? Yeah, I was a, uh, you know, during the recruiting process, I was a volunteer goalie guy. So obviously I wasn't on the road. Um, you know, Ben and I uh, talked at length about what we liked, you know, what I liked in a goaltender. And as Red just said, the athleticism is a big thing. And, and uh, you know, finding a great kid first and foremost, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing, just bringing in a great individual that's willing to work. So we talked about that. I know Ben and Jay Leach went out on the road and, very seldom do you get two guys, at least with us, that, that go to a same game. And I think, uh, you know, Ben would probably be able to better explain it. But Ben on one went on one end of the, of the net, you know, and Jay was on the other. And they watched. And obviously, Ben and I talked uh, at length about what we're trying to look for. And I watched him on video. And, and we just, uh, you know, talked, and talked about it. And then obviously on his visit, him and I got to, uh, got to talk goalie. And, uh, you know, obviously um, talking to him about the great history and, and what Maine hockey has meant to me as a person, as a goaltender, and, uh, and uh, you know, hoping to pass that knowledge that I learned along the way on to him. And, uh, you know, and he liked it, you know, and I'm sure he'll tell you a little bit about what Ben and Jay talked to him about, uh, you know, on his trip, you know, which is kind of cool too. Yeah, so to that point, Jay, how was that uh, on your end, the recruiting process? Yeah. The recruiting process was pretty cool. Uh, I just remember, you know, it was my first real week of, like, USHL hockey. It was at the Fall Classic, and, you know, it was highly touted. Everyone kind of told me going into it, there's going to be the most scouts you've ever played in front of your life. And I just didn't really look at that as pressure. I just looked at it as an opportunity, you know, to showcase my talents because I, I really never got any – I knew I wanted to play college hockey from a young age. So that was a really big priority of mine. And, you know, I never got the exposure I did uh, until I was in the USHL. And so I knew that that weekend was going to be a good, uh, good place to, you know, to show my talents. And I was fortunate. I got to talk to quite a few teams and then University of Maine came in. And I think the biggest thing that separated them from uh, any other team was just uh, how much they wanted to get to know me as a person and how much they wanted to improve me as a person. And they said that flat out, they said, we know your hockey abilities. We know you're, uh, you know, we know what you're capable of. And I didn't even know what I was capable of. You know, it's just like there was this uh, amazing, you know, belief and trust in me. And I thought that was pretty special to give me that confidence, you know, as this you know, newly uh, recruit going into the recruiting process. But it was funny. I mean, the conversation didn't, it wasn't even about hockey, really. It was about, uh, it was about, you know, the great hiking trails in the University of Maine and all the great fishing spots around uh, Orono because I don't know if a lot of people know, but I'm a big nature guy. I love being outdoors growing up in Alaska, obviously. And I just thought that struck home for me. And, you know, again, Coach Gite and Jay Leach did a great job. Uh, they kept they kept tabs on me throughout the year. And I just knew that this was going to be a special place. And on my visit, uh, seeing campus and seeing all the great coaching staff and really getting to know them on a personal level, right away, I just knew that this was going to be a, a special place for me. And it was a, a great decision. That's awesome. And it reminds me a lot of what we talked about as we were preparing for this over the last week, you bring up the staff wanting to get to know you as a person. And it was less about hockey and it was more about who you are. And Red, that really strikes a chord, just hearing you discuss the way that you structure your staff so that you have the opportunity to get to know Jeremy better. Do you mind touching on kind of the structure that you have and your role with Jeremy? Well. You know, first off, uh, I leave all things goalie to Alfie. Uh, I can speak English, French, a little bit of Russian, but uh, I, I'm not sure I speak goalie. So the more I stay out of it, uh, the, be the better off we are. And so uh, when it comes down to uh, everything that, that happens in terms of Jeremy's development on the ice, uh, I stay out of it. Uh, when it comes to Jeremy's development off ice in the weight room, uh, that's Matt Murray's job. Uh, and, and so what that allows me to do uh, is because I, I have uh, 
uh, 100% trust in the people that we have in our program, working within our program, our staff. Uh, it, it allows me to have conversations with Jeremy that are a little bit broader. You know, like uh, what's your role on the team as a leader? What's your role on the team as a teammate? You know, uh, what, what are you thinking about in this situation? And um, have you ever given any thought to, to this or that? You know, and there are certain things in, in every program, every, every head coach has certain things that, that they believe in as foundational to their program. You know, things, things that we believe in are, are, are things like uh, trust and respect and, and humility. And uh, so, so a lot of my conversations with Jeremy dealt with those kinds of things and questions about, because I've had the good fortune to uh, visit Anchorage, Alaska on more than one occasion, you know, we could begin by talking about the Chugach Mountains or Turnigan Sound or, you know, different things, moose coming down out of the Chugach range in the morning foraging for food you know, things that I had had an opportunity to experience through my visits to Anchorage. And so we were able to develop a relationship, uh, you know, in that way. And for me, uh, the only thing I had had to pay attention to all the time were, as far as his hockey's concerned, was just his work habits. And, uh, you know, basically that was never an issue for Jeremy. So, uh, you know, I, I didn't have to become coach orangutan uh, to, to the best of my recollection uh, when, it, when, it, when it came to Jeremy. You know, m most days when I was dealing with him, I was coach Feelgood, which is a nice thing. Coach Feelgood's better than coach orangutan. That's awesome. And I, I just think it's such a great message for all of our coaches to hear because there are so many coaches out there that don't have that goaltending background and often feel a little handcuff to help their goalies out, but there's so much more that goes into coaching than the X and O's of the crease movement and the X and O's of the RVH. And I just think this is a great example of the coach still coaching the athletes. There's so many different ways to do it through character, through teamwork, through all these different things that we know develop great athletes. And so for the coaches out there listening, if you happen to be one of those coaches that might not want to talk details of the goalie tactical skills, you know, rely on what you do know about the game or about the locker room or about teamwork. And you can still coach that athlete. That's I, don't, I don't think there's any question about it. You know, when I think the toughest part is I suspect there'll be youth hockey coaches on, on this, uh, on this platform here today. And, and there are, there are no easy answers, but there's always a way, you know? And, and so if you can't find somebody, I mean, at the end of the day, let's make no mistake about it. Jeremy Swayman's had the success he's had because first and foremost, he can stop a puck. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you can talk about, uh, foundational principles and uh and work habits and things like that you know his skills have to be developed his athleticism has to be developed his fitness has to be developed you know and and coaches if if they can't do those things uh they need to they need to help the athletes find people that can or as as was the case as Alfie pointed out with Grant Stanbrook uh, there weren't a lot of goalie guys back in the day when Grant taught himself about the position. And so he took it upon himself to learn. And I've, I've heard of other, several other outstanding coaches who taught themselves uh, the fundamentals of the position so that they could help young goalies be successful. So bottom line is you got a job to do, figure out a way to get it done. For me, it's easy. I just hire these guys and leave them alone. I know I'm modest you're being right now after talking to those guys. I really appreciate it. Um, Matt, I'd like to jump in with you here. Um, sure. Your journey with Jeremy, you know, he's coming in soaking wet, maybe a hundred pounds long and lengthy. And, you know, what was that journey like for you with him coming to Maine? Yeah, I'll never forget. Uh, we bring our freshmen in for about a month. Uh, it's usually a good time for them to take a couple classes, get acclimated. And I get a text from this Anchorage, Alaska number going, Hey, um, do we work out? Are, are we working out during this time? And I go, well, yeah, Jeremy, like, you know, it's optional. Like you don't have to make it mandatory. He's like, Oh, I didn't, I didn't think we were working out this entire time. So, you know, he calls me freaking out thinking he's going to be late for a workout. Right. Um, but right away, day one, um, you know, we just, we just hit it off. I think he knew that I played goalie, um, didn't play at a very high level. It was only a, a club goaltender, but um, you know, like kind of you were alluding to, I think, 
you know, I understand the kind of things he's going through on a day-to-day basis, right? You know, how he feels in the crease, uh, how he feels after a game, after a practice, um, and kind of coupled with my knowledge and, and what I do for the team, uh, it was very easy for me to develop that relationship with him. Um, Cause I really think that that's kind of the number one thing that I strive for with our athletes um, really develop that relationship, get to know them on a personal level. Um, and then I can kind of use my knowledge and my skills to help that athlete uh, kind of increase his or her weaknesses and strengths. It sounded like a big part of this process for you with Jay and how much volume of, of hockey he was playing was actually more probably the recovery and, and yeah you know, keeping him out of the gym at times instead of yeah. work hard. And that's, that's the beautiful part about uh, kind of what we do here at Maine. Um, we monitor our athletes a lot with a lot of, a lot of various forms of technology, uh, varying from heart rate monitors uh, to stuff they're doing in the weight room, how high they're jumping. Um, so I had a pretty good profile on Jeremy when he first came in. Um, and I kind of knew right away, I mean, he just kind of had that it factor right in the gym. He just, it's just everything looked good, right? I wasn't really teaching him a lot of brand new things, right? You know, we're cleaning up techniques on, you know, squats and main lifts and stuff like that. But I mean, he just really thrived in that environment. Uh, so he made my job very easy. Uh, but once we kind of knew right away that this kid, he was going to play a lot of games for us, right? And my job is, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily care how much Jeremy lifts in terms of weight. You know, I care how available he is throughout his time in Maine, right? Um, it doesn't really mean much to the team or, or to him individually. If, you know, he's squatting a lot of weight, but he can't play a game because he's hurt. Um, so what, using that and, you know, talking with our coaching staff on a day-to-day basis, talking with Jeremy on a day-to-day basis, um, you know, we were able to work with Alfie and design, you know, if we knew we had an easy practice day, okay, Alf, hey, what do you think about a goalie session today, right? And nine times out of 10, Alfie already had a plan. So to have that communication and that trust amongst our staff, um, it really, really helped in, in our communication and our development of, uh, of Jeremy over the last three years. And Alfie, how did that play a role for you? You setting up goalie skates and, and just managing Jeremy through the practice, through the communication you had with Matt? Yeah, it, it, you know, you obviously, uh, you know, you set your week up how we want to do it. You know, we knew days that we would like to get goalie sessions in. And obviously, you know, I talked to Red, you know, things that possibly we might need as a staff, you know, as myself, Red and Ben, we talk about how the week's going to go, the themes uh, that we want leading up to an opponent. And, you know, there's some teams that do things a little bit different. So, uh, you know, that was all based into first practice time, you know, and then deciding, you know, if it was going to be a, a four check uh, special team kind of day that was going to be a little light on the goalies, then we, you know, sit down with Matt and we talk about, you know, where we want his training load. And it could be a morning where Jeremy knew there were some mornings we were going to have as our, our goalie skate was going to be 45 minutes and it was going to be, it was going to be a tough one. You know, uh, he knew if he was on the ice by himself, it was, it was a real, going to be a good, hard 45 minute work time. And, and that was probably his training load for the, for the day, you know, cause Come practice time, you know, we probably have a few flow drills and, and then we got to jump into uh, into our uh, meat and potatoes of practice when it came to our, our stuff where a goaltender just wasn't going to get enough. So we knew going in, you know, how that week was going to play out in that sense and, and looking at training loads, obviously talking to Matt Murray, um, you know, on days we knew it was going to be a really tough day for a goalie. Well, you know, maybe we didn't have a goalie skate or... It was going to be a 20, 30 minute, very pro like. And when it comes to just detail, you know, uh, maybe he's just down his butterflies working on a stick. So we're not, we're not burning him in the goalie skate, but he's getting good, good work. And then come practice time, then it's uh, getting after it and knowing. So, you know, it's about Friday and Saturday for us, that, that performance on, on Friday and Saturday. So we're working up all week, trying to, you know, maximize it so that come Friday night, He's as fresh and, and ready to go. And then the hope is with all the work we put in through the week, uh, he recovers quick and then he does it all over again on Saturday. So uh, we thought, you know, we thought we worked out a pretty good formula. Like I said, right from red, red, red's great. You know, we talk in the morning on stuff and there might be a drill that we think we need in there because somebody's going to give a lot of traffic. So, you know, red throws in a, a real high traffic drill, you know, to finish and, so there's a lot of back and forth, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm sure it's like that for a lot of clubs. That's fantastic. And Jeremy, now for you, it's, 
you know, you're coming into school each year knowing, you know, I'm simplifying everyone's roles just for the sake of, of the call today, but you've got a head coach that's really helping build character and leadership. You've got a strength coach that you know is going to keep you healthy and safe and strong. And you've got a goalie coach that's going to keep you sharp on the technical side. How does that play into you, you know, preparing and being able to develop the way you have over three years at Maine? Sounds like a pretty good formula to me, huh? I mean, it's just, you named it. And, you know, Red's modest, uh, to be honest, you know, this doesn't happen without him and his leadership and obviously his experience. So uh, he's the gatekeeper for this whole program to work and for him to have the communication he does with, with Gite, Alf and, and Matt, you know, that this doesn't happen. And in my eyes, everyone's a goalie coach to me, right? you know, they might say they're not, but everyone's a goalie coach to me, no matter what, because they're, they're, they're focusing on each player's development. And in my opinion, in my obviously stands the goalie development. And so they're in the war room, they're planning out practices that are going to help me perform on Friday and Saturday night. And the practices are so detailed that I'll know, you know, they're, they're going to do different drills and different drive drills based on the team worth playing strengths. And it's just that whole week of preparation uh, is based on, you know, the team we're playing. And, and to me, that's, uh, that's everything. So, you know, I, I would not have had nearly the success I did without uh, the coaching staff, and the teammates I had throughout my three years here. And, you know, it's just, just like you said, I had every, every single opportunity to succeed here because of these uh, great coaches I've had. And, and uh, you know, I couldn't be more fortunate to be a black bear. That's great. And talk us a little bit through the, the mentality you have coming in, you know, your freshman year, first year in hockey East and, you know, maybe mm -hmm. some of the struggles you went through and then obviously the success you had later, just, you know, how did you manage all that coming in really to an unknown? I lost you there for a second, but I heard most of it, I think. Uh, <laughs> so I want to rephrase that one. Yeah, just take us through your journey of the three years on the mental side of the game. That's, you know, obviously a big part of goaltending is being able to manage the stress and the pressure and all that. And, you know, certainly I'm sure you went through time, some tough times over the three years and some great times over the three years. And um, how did you manage that in Hockey East being such a competitive league? Well, I, you don't. You can't buy experience. Red has a great line. He says, you can't go to Target and buy experience. And that's, uh, that's the truth. And uh, I wouldn't be anywhere I am now without the, the highs and lows I had at Maine and, and uh, you know, the summers I had uh, back home. So uh, it's just all based on experience. And these guys gave me the opportunity to gain, gain that experience uh, every day. And of course, uh, the great professors as well. You know, I was uh, in school every day too, so I had to manage a workload and and it's amazing how many people go into uh, my daily life as a college hockey player. And it's just all these unknown people that really should get more credit than they deserve. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's a team, team game in every aspect of it. And that goes, you know, to my roommates and it's obviously my teammates and, and everyone involved in the, the university. So I don't know. I just felt that I knew I was in a safe place. I knew I was in a place where I wanted to be. I was happy to be there and people around me were just as happy to be there too. And going to the rink every day was a fun and enjoyable experience, no matter what happened the day before. And we have great mentors. Uh, I know Doc Wally, who's our sports psychologist. I had a great relationship with him and that he helped me a big time in my mental game, obviously along with uh, Alf too and, and all the coaches. But, you know, I think the mental game for me was just really focusing on simplifying things. Uh, going in as a freshman, I had all these big dreams and aspirations, which is good but I needed someone to kind of mentor me to, to focus on the moment rather than the outcome and, and focus on the journey. And I just remember, you know, just so focused and reliant. Actually, Grant Sandbrook helped me one, one time. Uh, I was like, I was talking to him and I said, you know, I'm focusing on Thursday because that's gotta be my best practice of the week because I'm playing Friday night. And he said, Sway, you know, you're not going to be, good Thursday you're not going to be good Monday Tuesday Wednesday if all you focus on is Thursday practice and you just got to focus on you know that where your two feet are at at any given moment and just really simplifying things for myself obviously uh you know gave me a lot of uh, a lot of confidence and and success one thing we didn't get a chance to talk about yet was you had the opportunity to represent the U.S. in the world juniors and do you mind talking a little bit about, you know, what Red was talking about prior to joining the team and, and how that experience prepared you for some of the later successes you had? Yeah, that was a great experience. You know, I never, 
never knew that would happen because uh, I did a lot of the USA Pacific District camps and, and made it to national camp, I think, one or two years, but never never made any noise. And I didn't get to go to the India overseas tournaments. So I really thought I was kind of out of the picture with the USA scene for the 98 birth year. Um, and so getting the opportunity to represent USA at uh, Hockey at World Juniors, that was an incredible you know, honor and, and uh, being able to go there and represent my country for the first time. That's, uh, that's something I'll never forget. And just, I remember meeting the guys there. Uh, well, sorry, before Red did have a conversation with me and, you know, he knew what I was going into because he's been through it. And I, I really didn't, I, I, I didn't know any of these guys going in all these huge names, you know, in, uh, in college hockey and stuff. And he just said, Sway, if you go there and show what you can do and not tell anyone what you can do, the guys will love you for that and they'll play for you. And that really struck a chord with me because he was completely right. You know, I didn't have to say anything to get these guys to like me. I just had to do my role, play my role and, and be the best teammate I could possibly be and, and make sure that I'm battling just as hard for them as they would for me. And that's exactly what happened. And I ended up making some lifelong relationships out of that team. And I just remember being in that locker room, all these guys that had no reason to be humble whatsoever because they're amazing players that every one of them was just completely humble and, and just great guys. And, being a part of that culture really helped me, I think, uh, mature very fast. Just being around them for a month or two, uh, you know, I learned so much. And again, just being able to put on that sweater with uh, those, I think, 26, 27 guys, uh, I'll never forget that. That's great. And uh, that was actually a question from one of our audience members, which I thought was really neat. And so for everyone that is in the chat, please, if you have any questions throughout this on any topics at all, uh, feel free to throw those in the chat. Red, we've got another great question for you. And it's about, you know, the, the experience you do have in coaching at all different levels and over different, um, you know, generations as well. And the question is how, what's the difference in working with this generation of athletes as compared to athletes 20 years ago? Um, well, I, I think, I, I honestly believe, you know, that young hockey players aren't any different uh, than maybe I was um, back around the end of the Civil War when I when I started. Um, but what I do think is <clears throat> they come uh, prepared differently than perhaps we were. And I think they require um, or if, if you want to if you want to get the most out of them. Uh, I, I think you have to spend more time with them on things that don't have anything to do with hockey. Uh, I, you know, we call it relationship building. And uh, to, be, to be perfectly honest, uh, that's not the way I grew up. It's not the way I started in coaching. Uh, it used to be that the paradigm was, you know, players don't talk to the coach. The coach uh, is, is the... Uh, is is the boss and uh you don't share much about how you feel and whatnot perhaps uh out of fear to show any weakness and the coaches were less empathetic about what it was like to be a player you know it was it was sort of like we grew up and and uh we figured things out some of us not all of us but supposedly we were supposed to figure it out on our own and uh, that, that's not ideal in the modern world. I don't, I don't think it works anymore, you know. So on a personal level, I've, I've really tried to make changes. In the end, I haven't changed. I've always wanted the best for our teams, whatever teams I've been associated with or each of our individual players. But I've had to come to realize that there's, there's a different way to get there and you have to, you have to adapt to that different way to get there, you know? And at the same time, it's still pretty easy to maintain the lines between the coach and the player. You know what I mean? When we have, when we have discussions with the team, we ask their opinion about certain things, but in the end, uh, whatever decisions have to be made, I'm the one responsible for making the final decision. But in the old days, uh, we, we didn't tend to consult the players very much about what was decided. And I, and I think that's, that's a big change today. And quite frankly, it's a change for the better. 
uh, those kinds of relationships that you build and whatnot. When times get difficult, because they always do, there's always, um, there are always lulls in a season when your team's not playing well and whatnot. It's, it's the strength of those bonds that help you overcome those, those challenges more quickly, I think. Do you have any tips for those coaches? Change is so hard and, and we see it so often that when, you know, how resistant people can be to change. Was there anything that you did to try and force yourself into this next generation of coaching and not be latched on to, well, this is the way we think of always done things? Well, they say necessity is the mother of invention. But uh, at the end of the day, I've always felt that uh, the messages that I was attempting to teach were pure. Uh, that that they were unassailable, they were unarguable, they were the right things. Uh, I didn't have to change my core beliefs. What I had to change was how it was delivered and whatnot. Okay, because at the end of the day, it's about it's about getting results. Okay, so the way I want to do it, the way that's most comfortable for me, if that doesn't achieve results, and uh, then it needs to change. And so it doesn't matter. We all have to adapt. I mean, we're all sitting here today. Uh, you're having this, this thing because uh, most of us are quarantined because of COVID-19. If this weren't happening, uh, if, if, if we weren't in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and quarantined all over the country, we're probably not doing this today. So we're all adjusting, adapting all the time. And I think that's an important thing. Coaches always have to adapt. Human beings always have to adapt. Players have to adapt. If Jeremy's doing something and the, and, and the pucks are going into the net, well, he better change it so that the pucks don't go into the net. He better adapt or he doesn't move on. So we're all in the same boat that way, just like we're in the COVID-19 boat right now. And so, uh, you know, it's important. And it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what your personal philosophy is. What matters is that you can ultimately get results and help the people you care about. Like I care about my kids, my coaches, our program here at the University of Maine. And so how is my behavior helping to show that caring? Uh, that's bottom line. And if I need to change it, then I need to change it. It's great. We have a really good question here for Matt. It's we talked a lot about today about recovery and, and rest and understanding workload. And there's a big, you know, concern that all goalie parents have out there about hip injury. And the question is, what do you recommend for, you know, a younger youth athlete to, to make sure that they preserve their hips and have a long-term healthy career? That's a very personal question for me is I had a lot of hip injuries, uh, my post-college career, um, and kind of looking back on it now, you know, I think my younger playing days, I think a lot of the issues that, that I ran into, and I think younger, younger kids run into is just the amount of volume that they're playing. Um, I mean, I know sometimes it's inevitable. I used to referee hockey games where you, you know, you're doing a seven, eight, nine games on a weekend, right? I mean, that's just how the, how the world is with hockey. Um, and I think it's just balancing that with off ice training, right? I think a lot of the issues that I see in, in younger kids that are coming up through the system is, you know, they want to train because there's so much knowledge and information out there and they see professional hockey players training and, and doing it certain ways. And which is great. I think it's awesome that these, these pro athletes are inspiring these young kids. Um, but the kids have to realize that they're still developing uh, from a physical standpoint as well. Um, so just, you know, enjoy the off season of the big things we recommend. I still recommend that for our collegiate athletes. Um, I know a lot of these guys are skating in the summer. I know they have pro camps and they need to do it. Um, but if I can recommend as much time away from the ice as possible in the summer, it's something too, that I think is going to help not only just their hips, but, um, just that mentality when they come back in the ice. And, you know, that's something I preach to our athletes all the time, or I want you hungry mentally when you're coming back. Um, I want you feeling fresh. I don't want you feeling beat up. I don't want anything lingering from past season. Um, and I think smart training plays a, a, a huge part of that too. Um, and understanding that you can train very smart during the season while you're playing a lot of games. Um, but just minimum, just listening to your body and understanding, Hey, it's okay to take a day off or, Hey, it's okay. I played two games in three days and I have a scheduled training session today. 
Hey, maybe I'm going to go do yoga or do, uh, go do a regen session or something like that. So it's just listening to your body um, and understanding that it's a long-term process and it just doesn't happen overnight. Great. Got a question here for both Alfie and Jeremy. I'd like to hear both of your perspectives on this. Billy asks, Robin Leonard recently said in an interview that he feels like this generation of goalie and goalie coaches have become so overly technical that it's too predictable and it's hurting the game. What have you two done to balance that technically right versus just stop it mentality with your goalie? And so I guess, Alfie, I'd ask you first, you know, you're recently coming out of a, a playing careers and, uh, you know, so you're really drawn to that. And how have you adapted that? And Jeremy, after he answers, you know, how have you felt through that process after working under Alfie for these three years? Um, yeah. So for me, you know, at the end of the day, it's about getting in the flight path of the puck, you know, uh, you know, as I said before, I got, I got three goalies at university, Maine. they're all built different. They're all different heights, different abilities. Um, we're just trying to work on those abilities. Um, in Jeremy's case, he's athletic. Uh, we just stay on the, on point with the skating and, uh, you know, there, there's gotta be technical aspects to the game. You know, you gotta go back to your foundation and stuff, but, uh, you know, for him and I, we, we talk things through, obviously being an ex player, uh, I share my, my experiences of why we maybe would be technical in certain situations, but, at the end of the day, we talk about it all the time. It, it's not rocket science. You know, we try to break it down to the, the simplest uh, skill possible, you know, skating, um, key push, shuffle, all those kind of things. And uh, at the end of the day, if he's stopping the puck, he's making sure that my, our head coach can go home and not, not fret about our goaltender. You know, that, that's my job as a goalie, is trying to make sure that Sway is on point as well as Thiessen, as well as Mundinger on, on point. So Red can go home and enjoy a dinner and not worry about his goalies, you know. And uh, I'm probably a little loose that way. You know, I was a very technical goalie when I played. I had to be at five foot ten. Um, you know, everything had to be very detailed. But with Sway, um, his big body, uh, honestly, I, I love the fact that he's athletic and I try to make sure um, we keep that in him. You know, there's times... Uh, we just tell them to go play, play, play uh, three puck or play rebounders. You know, that's his goalie session is sway. Just go play rebounders today. You know, well, I want to work on that. No, just go play rebounders, go play hockey, have fun with it. He's getting his work. He's working on his athleticism. He's working on rebound control, all this stuff. But we try to keep it uh, like Matt said, you're trying to keep it mentally uh, just trying to keep it light too at times, you know, the season, it's a long season. Um, you know, you still got to have fun doing it. You know, as, as I told you before, I was, I was the straight, narrow, very laser focused guy and I had to do it. But honestly, uh, when you, I think back, I was drained after a practice. I was, you know, after a game, I, I was a guy after a game, I can eat my, my post game meal and I can go shut her down and, and be out until tomorrow, you know, and, and this guy's learned to, you know, do it in a way where he, he's always having fun at the game. You know, he's always having fun in practice. Guys, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you've seen pictures out there. He's, he's winking to a camera during a game, you know, in between whistles. But that's what works for him. And as uh, long as he's he's coming and he's bringing it every day, um, we're okay with that. You know, and he's, he's having fun. He's entertaining. Um, a lot of these young kids are looking up to him. And, uh, you know, and, and that's what it's all about. And Sway, how was that for you with that coaching style, allowing you that freedom to develop? I think the greatest thing Alfie did for me, I think our first conversation is was, I'm not going to change you as a goalie. I'm just going to help you perfect certain things that you can work on. And I took that and ran with it. And I was, I mean, you too, I work with you a ton, Steve. And, and you know, you, I was very fortunate to have two goalie coaches like that. But, you know, you both uh, – you both just said, I'm not going to change your style. We're not going to get technical. You're going to play your game because, you know, this is this is why you're doing it. This is how you've gotten to where you've gotten because, you know, of your own fundamentals. And uh, there's gotten to a point where obviously I'm still learning tons. Like I, I'm not, you know, near where I want to be. And so uh, I just take a, everything and soak everything in like a sponge. And, you know, if I don't like something, I'll be I'll be honest with uh, with Alf. I said, Alf, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want 
want to, you know, do an RVH in this, uh, in this and said, sway, it doesn't matter, man, stop the puck and feel comfortable doing it. And so uh, that's, what's been so beneficial for me is not having that goalie coach. That's been, it's either this way or the highway. And I think that works, uh, you know, to do information and I'm willing to try different stuff. The thing too, Alf always said, Sway, why not try something? I am the best. I you know there's so much hockey. I've obviously started watching a ton of hockey too and, and just learning from different goalies is uh is something that I'll always do now because of, uh, you know, what he's taught me in that aspect of things. And there's always something to learn, no matter how good uh, you think you are something, no matter how good your strength is, there's always something to improve on. And that's just my mindset on things. And it's always has been, but really, uh, really definitely took a, uh, took a turn for the better in this last three years. You bring up an interesting point that we hear about often just uh, with goalies in general, and that's that balance between having multiple goalie coaches in your corner. And obviously that can be a huge strength to have more mentors. Right. And, um, but there's also a lot of times that goalie coaches let their ego almost take precedent over the athlete's development. And like you said, kind of say like, listen to me, don't listen to that guy. You know, he's an idiot, stuff like that. And that, that can really be detrimental to your goalies. And um, we had Peter Aubrey on last week and it was, really cool to hear him talk about stress levels of goaltending and how he really feels that his job as a goaltending coach is to alleviate all the strength, all the stress necessary. There's already enough to stress about and why on earth would we as coaches add more stress to that player's plate? And uh, I would imagine it could certainly be stressful to be a young goalie or a goalie in general, having two different coaches in your ear with differing ways to play the position that are both very steadfast as this is the way to do things. Um, so that's pretty neat to bring up for all those coaches listening out there. Another question we have here for Red. Red, having time with the New Jersey Devils and Jacques Lemaire and Martin Brodeur, two people that are, you know, hugely storied in goaltending in the history of hockey. Um, what were your two biggest takeaways being able to work in, in that organization with those storied goaltending developers and goaltenders? Well, Jacques, uh, Jacques Caron, Jacques Lemaire was a head coach. Jacques Caron was a goalie coach. And, uh, of course, Marty Brodeur, you know, I, I, uh, I learned a long time ago when I was a young coach, uh, if you want to win, get off the bus with the best players. And, uh, you know, Marty Brodeur is, is uh, obviously one of the best of all time. And Jacques Caron used to... Uh, you know, there are a couple of things that, that come to mind right away. You know, when I was with the big club, I uh, spent 11 years with the Devils, but he spent only three with the big team in New Jersey. But while I was there, Marty Brodeur used to work on his skating all the time. Jacques Caron was, was big on skating. Jacques Caron used to say goaltending is, uh, you know, the four S's. He used to say, uh, S number one, see the puck. S number two, skate to the next place you need to get to. S number three, get set for the shot. And S number four was make the save. But Marty Brodeur used to skate the referee's crease at center ice as opposed to the goalie crease because obviously that was a lot bigger. So he would work on his lateral pushes using those markings on the ice. You know, we hadn't gotten to the point at that time where, you know, we do what Coach Alfie does now, bring out a can of spray paint, you know, so we can mark up the ice at the day's practice. Uh, so he used to do that. And the other thing Jacques Caron and Marty used to do all the time, uh, after every game, Jacques and Marty would, would go over the scoring chances against. And so they would basically go through all of Marty Brodeur's touches. And they did it religiously, whether, whether Marty pitched a shutout or maybe, uh, you know, he had a bad game uh, or, or didn't play as well as he, he certainly would have liked to. And, and while I was with the Devils, uh, like every goalie, I saw Marty have some nights where he wasn't at his best. But during my time there, I never saw Martin Brodeur ever have two stinkers in a row. Uh, we're really rather remarkable that way. And his goalie coach, Jacques Caron, uh, was, was, a big, was a big part of that, in my humble opinion. And just to add something to that, Red, uh, about not having two stinkers in a row, Jacques would always harp on 
you know, no, don't get scored on twice in a row. So that was the refocus that you always had to have. You get scored on, and it was the refocus that Marty um, had to have and all those great goalies there. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't think there's any question about it. one of the things Jock used to say in practice all the time, you know, sometimes the practice isn't designed for the goalie and the shots are coming pretty quick during the course of a practice. You know, one guy comes down and shoots and the goalie doesn't have time to, tr to track the rebound and then come back and get set for the next shooter. And Jock used to tell Marty and Chris Terreri, who played there during that period of time, hey, you don't have to stop every shot in practice, but decide which ones you're going to play like a game. So when the drill isn't designed uh, for you and, and has you and what you need in mind, then you, you have to adjust your thinking and, and when you actually bear down. And that was an interesting thing that I learned from Jock Caron, where truly one of the great, great goalie coaches that I've ever been around in 41 years, truly. Not as good as Alf, but uh, pretty darn good. And for those listening that don't know Dave Caruso, who's our manager of the coaching education program, how many years were you with that uh, program, Dave? I was with, I played for them for five years and uh, coached with them for two. So um, still talk to Jock regularly and he's a really great mentor and really just knows him, his stuff and makes you wanna, he makes you feel good about playing goalie and just, you know, builds that relationship with all his players, no matter where they are. I mean, there's still a lot of coaches and players that just call him throughout the year that are currently still in the NHL. You know, like it's, he's a pretty special guy. So sounds a little bit like Grant Stanbrook too, doesn't it? To have them on yeah. in the next webinar, that would be unbelievable. Oh, <laughs> we'd have to have a five hour webinar with them. With the two of them, you don't need any goalies or any other goalie coaches. You just ask one question and let them go. Mm -hmm. That's been a very common theme. You know, we've had so many excellent coaches on here over the last month, and that's been the one consistency, no matter what their role was in hockey, that relationship piece, like building that connection with your athlete. And it, it almost seems like, you know, the technical and tactical side that we all love so much and get so drawn up in, you know, that's, that's really such a small piece of this whole game of uh, developing athletes. Well, I know we're running short on time here. So Jeremy, I just would like to ask if you had any advice for any young goalies coming up. We have had a few questions in the chat here from some of our younger athletes in regards to, you know, what they need to do to get a scholarship or, you know, what college is looking for and, you know, how, how could they one day become the next Jeremy Swayman and just any advice you have through, through the times that you've gone through your careers thus far. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just battling and setting goals for yourself. You know, I know that I uh, I had to take a step back and, and you know, not, uh, I guess just I set a lot of goals and I, I was focused on those goals rather than the, the moment, you know what I'm saying? But it's it was important for me to set those goals at an early age and to constantly push and never give up and just battle uh, you know, to my, for myself, really, because there's competition out there, but the greatest competition is yourself. And if you're not going to push yourself and you're not going to instill work habits uh, that are going to get you to the next level, then it's going to be tough, you know, and I've been fortunate again, you know, to have great mentors and great, uh, great role models in my life. But at the same time, I, I, I seeked, you know, other people that have uh, done it before me. And, you know, I, I definitely, asked a ton of questions and that's the biggest thing is because you know I think a great quote is you know a smart man learns from others mistakes a wise man uh does it oh wait now I'm now I forgot the quote look at this all right <laughs> but, anyway, <laughs> but uh it's all right you know that's my tidbit of advice but uh you know it's just important to uh to battle for yourself and and you know not take no for an answer necessarily and give no doubt to uh, to others watching that's great I love the quote too. That was spot on. I'll get it back. I'll just... <laughs> but just uh, one story, I don't even know if I've shared with everybody on the call yet, but uh, just to, to Red and Matt and Alfie, all of your credit, um, I was on a, a hike with Jeremy last summer prior to going into this year that he had. And he's talking about, he wants to be the best goalie in hockey East. He wants to sign after this season. He wants to have an excellent year. And so we're on this probably hour long hike. And I keep thinking that, you know, the questions are probably going to be tactical. They're going to be technical. They're going to be about how do I stop more pucks next year? So I get, you know, better stats. And all he asked about 
was how do I become a better mentor for the freshman goalie coming in? And I thought that was so cool that the culture that you guys have created has a high profile goalie, not asking about stopping pucks, but saying, how do I become a better teammate so that when I leave Maine, it's in good hands. And I just really appreciate you guys for creating that culture. Well, I, I think that's a tribute to Jeremy. You know, uh, when, he, when he played his last game as a black bear and, and we weren't thinking it was gonna be his last game, it turned out to be senior night. We were home at the Alphon Arena and Jeremy, Jeremy pitched a shutout. Uh, we beat Providence one to nothing. We got a goal roughly midway through the third period. And, and, and Jeremy uh, obviously shut the door down the stretch. And, and he was on a, on a bit of a streak. I think he had three shutouts over his last five games. So, you know, the media comes by and they're asking Jeremy to, to talk about himself. And uh, what he said was, uh, hey, I just wanted to win this game for the seniors because it was going to be their last home game potentially at the, at the Alphonse Arena, which is a magnificent place to play college hockey, as everyone knows. And, uh, you know, you, you may be saying, you know, you credit us with that, but, uh, you know, education is a two-way street, so we may teach that stuff but the players are responsible for learning it. And uh, learning means uh, how you behave. You know what I mean? It's not what you say you're gonna do. Learning means what you do do. So uh, that's, a, that's a credit to Jeremy. It's a credit to Alfie who done most of the work here, uh, but mostly to him. And so uh, I, I've said too much here today. This was, should have been a show about Jeremy Swayman, and I've had a lot to say, so I'm going to shut her down for good. No more questions for me. <laughs> That's great. Well, we're out of time today, but guys, thank you. This was an excellent episode, and um, congratulations to all of you, but specifically, Jeremy, congratulations on your successful college career, and we're really excited to all watch you as you take that next step into the pro ranks with the Boston Bruins. Thanks, Tomer. Dave, take it away. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Coach Gendron, Coach Murray, Coach Michaud, and Jeremy. Great job. Um, really, you know, their story and just everything about the relationship and building that development team. Uh, Jeremy, good luck next year with the Bruins. So th I think that's going to be an exciting time for you uh, in Providence or Boston or just make the team out of camp. That's all you got to do, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Yeah, and uh, just want to thank everybody for watching USA Hockey webinar series presented by Pure Hockey and BioSteel. Tomorrow we have uh, the gold medal winning goalies from the 1980 men's, uh, 2018 women's teams, and the 2014 and 2018 sled team. So really great day with uh, Steve Thompson back on as well. Um, so we'll see everybody tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Uh, on YouTube or on Zoom. So everybody have a great day, and I uh, re really appreciate everybody watching.